Hey, this is going to be a very quick and dirty video about this coefficient of correlation called Xi. And uh, since it's a coefficient of correlation, uh, what we want to figure out is basically uh, whether this variable Y depends on the variable X. Um, and as you can see from the formula, it's a rank-based um, coefficient. So um, the interesting thing is basically how do the ranks R of the variable Y uh, compare um, to the, the respective ranks of, of X. So what we're doing is basically we're sorting the ranks of X and then we're looking at small changes of X and the idea is that if we have small changes of X and Y depends on X then we should also have um, somewhat small changes of of y because if de y depends on x and x changes only a little then y should also change not too much um, okay but I think it's it'll become more clear if we look into th this toy example um, and what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna do the ranking and of course so now it's easy to see um, with X and Y that Y indeed depends on X because it's simply Y is X squared. So we should end up with a coefficient of correlation that's that's big, that's somewhat close to 1. Okay, but let's try. Um, what we're doing is we're ranking X. So we start with the smallest value and um, this is minus 5, so this gets rank 1, rank 2, this is rank 3, rank 4, rank 5. And we're going to do the same thing for um, for Y. And this is basically the ranks of Y. This is what's called R here. So let's also make a new column. That's R. And, okay, we see now we have a problem because we have two ones here, so it's basically the same value, but the ranking has to be unique, so um, we we have this tie, and the rule is to break the ties evenly. So we randomly assign one um, the first number and one the second number, so let's just choose. This is the first one, this is number one, this is going to be number two, this is number three, four and five perfect now we have our ranking of both x and y and what we're going to do is now we're sorting it according to this ranking so we have a new table and we're writing it down sorted by this column so the first one is minus five y for this is 25 number two is minus one is one number three is one which is also one four is two this is four and five is six so it's 36 and now it's important to keep track of our r's of the ranks of y um, because these just um, stay there so this is number four so we had this is this is that one minus one and one so this is number one so this is to be number two um, this is number three and 36 is number five okay and from the formula we can see that we're looking into the, these differences of the R's at position I plus one and position I so basically the differences of these ranks um, between one and, uh, and the next one. So basically this would be minus three, this would be one, this would also be one, and this would be two. So let's just call it D. And for me, I think it's it's more evident what's, what's going on here if we say we call it like that, so Xi, 
is 1 minus 3 times the sum of these differences d and it's not just the sum of the differences but rather the sum of the absolute value so something like that divided by the total number of of um, of entries that we have so it's um, 5 squared minus 1 okay and if we evaluate that we end up with something that's 1 minus 3 times and this is okay this is 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 25 minus 1 and that's equal to 1 minus so 3 times uh, 5 plus 2 is 7 by 24 so we end up with 1 minus 21 minus uh, divided by 24 so this is actually pretty small so it's like um, it's like 1 minus um, yeah it's like I don't know uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's call it 0 0.1 <laughs> because I'm bad at math. Um, okay, so anyway, this is not what we wanted. So this is pretty small. And why is that? Um, the reason for this is that we have pretty small n squared here. So we only have, have five entries. And um, it turns out that with so little um, information, it's basically, you know, it's more or less random if, if this ordering is, is nice or if it's just not the way we want it. And so we end up with a pretty small um, correlation coefficient. But this was just a toy example. So let's look at the same thing um, uh, with more. So uh, with with more than, than five samples. So let's do it with a thousand samples. And it's simply the same. So we're sampling random numbers um, between um minus 2.5 and 2.5 and y is simply x squared so we have this nice parabola um and if we look into other correlation coefficients okay the linear correlation coefficient is basically zero because there's no linear correlation and also the spearman r is pretty small but if we look into um so all of this is basically the xi, the code for xi, so the xi equals 0 0.994. So it's super high, it's almost 1. Um, and this is basically the nice thing about this um, coefficient of correlation um, that um, given we have enough data, so it's do it doesn't really work for, for um, only a few data points, but if we have like a thousand points, then we have this nonlinear um, uh, function we can uh, we, we get a result a correlation coefficient of basically one and yeah so I hope um, you know the the big idea is is clear <laughs>